Jesus is the uh, main character of the Bible, and four books of Gospels describe about Jesus Christ and his ministry. And Jesus lived 33 years on the earth, but these four books, four Gospels, focus on mainly three years of ministry. But what is the core element of Jesus' ministry? So one third, one third of the four Gospels focused on one week of Jesus Christ, which is Passion Week, followed by his crucifixion and resurrection. So how much do you understand about the cross? The correct understanding of the cross is very fundamental and crucial to our faith. Today, we'll have the message from the cross, about the cross. The title is Mercy for the Undeserving. That is what the cross conveys to us. We don't deserve any mercy or grace because we all keep failing. But even the undeserving, Jesus saved them. That is the reason of our hope. John chapter 18, Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and there he was arrested. But in the book of John, in the Gospel of John, his, uh, this narrative is a little different than what is written in the Gospel of Matthew. By the, according to the Matthew, according to Matthew, Judas Iscariot kissed Jesus and identified that person is Jesus. But in the Gospel of John, Jesus willingly identified himself. So which is right, whether Judas pointed out Jesus or Jesus stepped forward to reveal himself? Here we cannot decide which is exact right uh, description, I mean, the writings record. But one thing for sure that both the Gospels also conveys the meaning or message from God inspired, inspired by Holy Spirit. The Gospel of John portrays Jesus as a courageous savior who came to save his people. Verse 4, Then Jesus, because he knew everything that was going to happen to him, came and asked them, Who are you looking for? They replied, Jesus the Nazarene. They told him, and he told them, them I am he. Now Judas, the one who betrayed him, was standing there with them. So when Jesus said to them, I am he, they retreated and fell to the ground. Then Jesus asked them again, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. He knew everything about the crucifixion, his painful death, his nakedness, and his shame. Although he knew all this painful uh, crucifixion, he stepped forward he stepped forward willing, willingly and courageously. Jesus said, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. And Jesus replied, I am he. They fell to the ground. Why? In the Gospel of John, Jesus, when Jesus said, I am he, he wants to connect or remind of what God said to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. As God sent Moses to save, to deliver the people, people, of, people uh, from Egypt, Moses asked, what is your name that I can tell 
it to them. And God said to Moses, I am that I am. And here John 8, 18, 5, Jesus told them, I am he, I am. So it means this way, the God who had delivered their ancestors from Egypt now came to deliver them from sin and death. So the God who delivered the Israelites from the land of slavery is Jesus Christ who will free the people of Israel from the slavery of sin. As Jesus' divinity is uh, proclaimed, the people fell to the ground because of awe and fear. And in John chapter 18, I am as repeated three times. And Jesus replied, I told you that I am here. If you are looking for me, let this man go. If you need me, if you need to arrest me, let these people, my disciples, go free. So he didn't want his disciples to get in trouble with him. Even at the moment he was being arrested and to be crucified, he cared for his disciples. Why? Because he came to deliver them from death. And all these situation verses and what he said explains or uh, illustrate that Jesus is the courageous Savior God that I am. Also, one more thing we can learn from uh, the narrative here, from the passage here is, Jesus saves the, un the undeserving Peter, who is saying, I am not his disciple. Peter didn't understand why Jesus was willingly approaching the cross. So he tried to escape the situation. He tried to prevent uh, Jesus being crucified. Verse 10, Then Simon Peter, who had the sword, put it out and struck the high priest's slave, cutting off his right ear. Now the slave's name was Mercus. Peter seemed uh, courageous, but in fact, he feared death. Therefore, later he denied Jesus three times. John 15, Peter had, had said proudly, Even though all others would abandon you, I won't leave you. But it turned out exactly the opposite. All others didn't deny Jesus. In fact, they fled. But Peter tried to follow Jesus, but he denied. As Peter and John follow Jesus from a distance, someone questions, questioned Peter. The girl who was the doorkeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples too, are you? He replied, I am not. 25 verse. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was standing in the courtyard warming himself. They said to him, You aren't one of his disciples too, are you? Peter denied it. I am not. I said I am not. So, like this, while Peter was denying he was not Jesus' disciples, but Jesus is saying, I am he. I am the sin offering to atone the sin of Peter. I am dying for him. Let this man go. Let the curse of sin fall upon me, not on 
these people. In this way, Jesus died for their sins. He knew Peter's desire and warned him, but he failed. Like this, Jesus knows we would fail, but he still loves us. This is grace, isn't it? So the cross was a sacrifice for the undeserving. But there's one more thing we should know about the cross. If you pity Jesus because of his death, that's not a proper understanding. When people of Jerusalem uh, follow, were well, following Jesus Christ on, on his way to the Calvary, they wept and they cried with the sympathy. And Jesus said to those who, who are crying for them, daughter of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but cry for you and your children. So unless you repent, you will suffer more severe punishment than this crucifixion. The point is here, what is God's will? Jesus' death is not, is not for <laughs> Jesus' death is to save them from their sins. And it was God's will it was God's will to save sinners through the mercy for the undeserving. Verse 9, he said this to fulfill the word he had spoken. I have not lost a single one of those whom Father God gave me. But Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So it was God's will for him to die on the cross for sinners. It was God's will to protect the disciples who were undeserving. That's why Jesus voluntarily stepped out. I am here and take me. Let this man go, which is to protect his disciples and to deliver them from death. As we know that Jesus' sacrifice was God's will, it is more guaranteed that we will get eternal life from God through Jesus Christ. Let me close. Do we need such a grace from Jesus Christ? Yes, because we fail every day. In three weeks, Easter comes. And meditate on Jesus' voluntary and courageous sacrifice. And if you realize how thankful it is, and give praise to God, and share it with your friends, your neighbors, and also as we courageously carry the burden of our brothers and sisters. God's will, who sent his son on the cross for the undeserving, will be manifested to the world. As we need God's mercy, they need the mercy through us. Thank you.